And I feel like Becky needs to bring snacks. Just bring snacks. Put yourself on mute and eat. I, I, I don't know what to say. I just texted her that. Like bring Number a cracker? One. Like a cracker yeah. or a granola bar? A granola bar or whatever you're going to eat. Just like have some a snack and put yourself on mute. I cut, my t- I cut my fingernails while we were podcasting. I just put you guys on mute while you guys were talking for 500 years. Welcome to another Game of Thrones edition of the Friday Night Movie Podcast. We'll never know if we couldn't afford the rights to the song or if Shy just doesn't know how to edit it in. <laughs> and this will be our last Game of Thrones related podcast pretty much forever until the spinoff starts. Because you refuse, no, because you refuse to watch any spinoffs. Oh, God, I'm so, so this glad. Is it. I, I have to say, I'm so glad it's over and I really enjoyed it, but we'll get we'll get to all of that in a moment. But first, before we talk about Game of Thrones, how are you guys doing? Lil, how are you? I'm really good. I had an epic weekend, um, like just for the ages, a weekend for the ages at your house. Um, it was a party. It was amazing. It raged. It was, yeah, it was a big deal. We like stayed up till two in the morning um, at your concert night at your house, which is like seven in the morning in Europe, like for American <laughs> time. Um, it was amazing. You had like this thing called the Yellow Door Night, which was an awesome night of concerts, music, um, just different people, you know, playing songs and stuff and like real professionals playing. And it was quite amazing. Um, tons of activities for kids. It was great. And it was super cool that your musical life partner, Howie, came with his family from Calgary for the weekend and I hadn't seen how I think we calculated like 15 years which seems surreal to me because I grew up with him but it was so so fun to see you guys play live it was amazing it was an amazing weekend and how he listens to the podcast so it was like super fun to get a, like to chat with him about it and he said to me he goes I have to say you're my favorite character on the podcast <laughs> and I was like and I was oh like, okay, no biggie first of all I was like, thank you. Second of all, not a character. That is just me. I'm like, sorry. <laughs> I'm like, I am not putting on airs. <laughs> Full disclosure, mean, it's real. I, 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 so, so if you're out there and Howie, Becky, if you're out there, favorite. if you're out there and Becky's your favorite character, now's the time to speak up because she's already getting anxious. Yes. Well, Becky, <laughs> Becky, I, I was talking to Dad about Becky's character because, as if it's, you know, what as if they're not my real. Character? Well, Becky, you're the straight man. And so dad was like, oh, well, you man. know, the straight man in like Abbott and Costello. Always and makes more money. Ever. And Dean Martin always makes more money. And I was like, that seems accurate because like I Becky will like wait. <laughs> yeah. A, that is accurate because Becky definitely makes more money than me. And B, um, like Becky waits like her just for her exact moment. You know, and just like I mean, I know it's a joke. that way, but it's mostly that I'm not listening. And then sometimes <laughs> it's also fair. Becky, um, and I got to meet Pam Gurley in person. Oh yeah, like, I, it was a big weekend. Oh, you it met really Pam Gurley in person. Yeah, who's like a Dr. Pam. Uh, Dr. Right? Pam Gurley is phenomenal. Dr. Pam yeah. Gurley of Herspiration and unapologetic yeah, unapologetic yeah she is a force of nature it was amazing when you guys and I, I had forgot that they were both there in the same place and they're standing next to each other and i was like oh lily look there's pam yeah that's so and funny because i shit myself i was like seeing a celebrity oh wow what a reunion mm-hmm. it, it, it was big I'm telling you, it was an epic weekend becky how are you um I've had better days. I've had better weeks. I'm coping with the extreme FOMO of having missed out on the yellow door night, but you know, I'm getting through it. Finding time for self care as a way to uh, <laughs> deal with FOMO to deal with my, with my FOMO, you know, well, we missed prepare, preparing never... for my, for my trip to the East coast and then to Canary islands where, where I will be left out so much. 
It's I'm just gonna like, leave him out for three like, weeks straight. So you guys, you guys left me out for like two days. Then we left Becky out for like you four days. You guys left me out for two years. What two uh, years? Like before you were born. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite funny and very true. He's the straight man now. That's amazing. And, um, but now you and I will leave Shia out for like three weeks and he's like not going to have FOMO and he's going to be like, oh, I don't want to go where there's sand. (laughs) So I'm fine at my house. (laughs) No matter what we do, we can't, like Shia doesn't feel left out. It's like Uh, Shia's dream vacation if he can be in his basement and just FaceTime in. Oh yeah. And my air conditioning, it's amazing. It's my favorite temperature. Okay. Let's get to, speaking of hot places king's landing got a little well, hot well a couple of weeks ago there. yeah a little it got it got dragon fire hot little drogon fire drogon fire is that the name of the dragon really yeah. original yes yeah, drogon <laughs> so well, let's, the other ones had other names so we're gonna start with two major components of episode five before we get into the finale in episode five we had a lot of chit chat and then we had the... I don't even, like, remember what happened. We had oh, the, yeah. We had battle. the turn of Daenerys. The the bells have been rung. King's Landing has surrounded, surrendered. And she's like, forget it. I'm torturing this I'm torching this place. So she's torching the place. And then in the meantime, you got Jamie Lannister fighting his way through Euron Greyjoy to just... for So George R. R. Martin can give us one more, like, blechy incest, like make out scene before he and his sister are crushed oh spoiler alert if you're listening to this episode and um and and so those are i think the two big things that happened in that last episode and and i don't think we can talk about it without talking about the context of how angry people got about it because i'll say up front I really like the last two episodes. I think that the the fourth episode was the one with the most wasted time. I think that you it's I like the last two episodes on 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 a certain level. Like if I don't think too hard about it, I'm like this is great. And I think that hits the nail on the head. I think that's the perfect way to question. I go wait a minute. That seems a bit weird. What? What? If so, you what? don't think about it, it's fantastic. If I don't think about it, I'm like to totally satisfied. Think about it, then you're I don't think like, about oh, it, I'm man. like, yeah, I wanted Arya to kill Cersei, but I also think it's actually pretty cool that Jaime and Cersei reunite to die together because that's also a really strong thread. Like, as much as Arya's vengeance is a thread, the Jaime Cersei love story is a really big thread in throughout the whole series. So, like, Ooh. that could be satisfying. I'm just saying that, like, if I don't think too hard about stuff, I'm like, sure, so, that works. So, what I think the last two episodes in general do did is they it delivered on character stuff even though the plot stuff was really rushed and threadbare at times and and we're clearly missing key components it's like we got the surface but i think from a character arc standpoint what did we learn we learned that and i had been saying this before Tyrion does his monologue daenerys has been flirting with being a dictator who murders large groups of people for the entire time we've been watching this show. I agree with that. Unfortunately, many people don't agree and feel very wounded by her turn and they feel betrayed. Like, I, which in a way is, you know, Jon Snow's a good stand-in and Tyrion's a good stand-in for how a lot of other viewers felt. Like, I can tell you, are, Vlad felt very betrayed by her actions. I get that she but was, I agree like, with you, a, she killed a lot of people, but she also always tried to do everything else first before murdering all those people. But no. she, so no, like, she was often not convinced, she often was convinced by other people well, not I guess to the people that she, uh, yeah. And also, she very much yeah. believes that, like, they're righteous killings because she's killing right, them for right. a good they're reason. Her en- they're her enemies. And, they're her enemies or the enemies the, of other I'm people. Selling. You know, they're they're slave they're slave masters. Like there's things that so it was like very in her mind like righteous like a righteous deed. And I think that there's another really interesting thing that you you put you lay it over history, and if you look at all of her speeches, right, all of the things she talks about, first of my name, the breaker of chains, the burner of this and that, right. Uh, and how she talked about, I'm going to come with my Dothraki army across the waters and we're going to kill everybody. She's been saying this stuff the whole time. And it's almost like 
people kind of looked past it and been like, no, she's so strong and she's so fierce. But but she really was talking the whole time about like laying waste to all these people. And I think but everybody she, hoped she would. Sure, but like, never lived in women and children. Let's no, be like, honest. She never yeah, I agree. She wouldn't. She wouldn't. That yeah, was a never, bit out of character. Um, now. The other thing to keep in mind is as far as her being like wanting to basically have an empire, not just a kingdom, is that like, what did people think would happen with her army of Dothrakis once they took over King's Land Landing? They were going to settle down and start families like they're nomadic um, war marauders. Yeah, like exactly. <laughs> nomadic marauders like that's like what would happen next you would go and you'd conquer the next place and the next place so i think certain things are like just read between the lines but it is concerning the idea that like she would kill even you know people that she in in any other city would protect but i do so but here here's where here's where i actually just want to make my main point about the last season and about the last three episodes in particular is that i think the actual problem is that the people creating the show got so burnt out that they just need they just needed to finish and so they decided just to make one more season just to finish it when in reality everything that happened in the first three episodes and everything that happened in the last three episodes could have each been their own six to eight episode season that's fair because there was so much to unpack and so much to develop and so while the groundwork i'll give for back Daenerys the second turn, and third season in, in place i was gonna of, say i was gonna that. say they waste and the fifth they wait the fifth season that's for example they have these seasons, shit. they have these whole seasons about characters that ultimately you spend so much time investing in that they die and none of it even matters or you have all these this whole season about like war strategy that again doesn't even really matter and i feel like they burnt themselves out on these very long dense seasons and then we got to the end where it's actually exciting and they were just too tired and they were like this is the gist of what's going to happen. Let's just get it done. And so the Daenerys thing holds, you know, in like the framework of it, but they could have actually, if they had really taken their time with it, really developed so, that. So this is where I'm going to... I mean, it's I, pretty... This, she dies pretty quickly. The, like it, this is where I'm going to stick it to the people who like the book so much and the people who like gushed about those earlier seasons. And, oh, you don't know who's going to die and you don't know what's going to change and all this stuff. Number one, some of this is George R. R. Martin's fault because I do not believe this guy had a plan. I believe he was just meandering through, writing about all these people, didn't think he was ever going to be this famous. And so you get like, you know, seven hours of television about the Stannis Baratheon, you know, right, like, family dynamics. Stuff? And then he sits the down with The one that married to the end is Gendry, who's in like. Who is like a totally different storyline, you know? And then and then they sit down with George R. R. Martin. They lock him in that room, and they're like, "All right, tell us what happens at the end." And he's like, "So all these characters that you've been following, they all die, and only four of them matter at the end." <laughs> and and they're like, "What? Yeah. Why would we do all that stuff with Rob Stark? We spent three seasons." So, on so, Rob Stark. So so I think the people who loved all the tangents and all these things, like. It, it, that's ultimately part of why you're not satisfied right now because you, you, do you think that they were going to be making once they realized that like th how expensive the show is getting they were going to keep right. making full seasons about characters that There's the that's don't what, I'm curious Maybe Becky point. if you have an opinion on this how do they make money besides the merch like are, this isn't a movie franchise what I do for a living I don't know I don't. Don't you do budgets? I don't do these kind of budgets. We might need a lawns, um, a lawns console. Yeah, I don't know. Right, because I, like if if it's a million an episode just in the production, then they like have the salaries okay, and all that. It's definitely way more than that. <laughs> a million? I don't know. I thought it was a million. I back. I guess back years ago it was a million. It's got to be way more. The 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 special effects alone? No way. But anyways, that doesn't matter. That's a tangent. Um, tangent. So there's so we talked about Daenerys. We, we hit on Jamie. Uh, let's talk about Cersei Jamie and Cersei a, a little bit more. I, I want to make a point about Jamie and Cersei. So to the point about the people who love the Red Wedding, which I think is like one of the worst moments in television I've ever seen. I think it was like super telegraphed and I think it was overly gross for the purpose of being gross. And they got all this critical acclaim for it. But really, it was just a gag as far as I'm concerned. Everyone who relished being surprised all these years 
in the end, had such strong convictions about how they wanted it to go, and when they didn't go the way they wanted, and they were surprised, they're so angry that they were so surprised. angry. Exactly. I'm like, well, you know what? This isn't when you make a show that has all these little twisty twists. Then you got to accept the twisty twists. I, there's, there's, but you know, when we talk about the twisty twists, and I talk about when I think deeply about it, when I don't think deeply about it, I'm totally satisfied. I'm happy with it. As soon as I think deeply, I start to get a little bit irritated because, for example. The bombshell of Jon Snow being a Targaryen feels so relevant. It feels like it's going to change the course of history. It means nothing. In the end, it I don't explain. Well, it doesn't no, matter. So it, just, does. it doesn't matter. Here's it what it does. What, jo, do, what just because that dragon doesn't kill him because he's a Targaryen. And, and it's it. the thing that fractures... It's the thing that fractures all I guess, the unity around Daenerys because uh, it pushes her over, it, over the edge. It pushes, it pushes like, her he, over he the edge. Push, he he can't be. He doesn't want to be with her. And Tyrion she says questions now, her. Daenerys question. Yeah. And it gives Sansa. And then she says, "Now sure. I guess I." It gives Sansa go that fear. And it gives Sansa yeah. her chip to play. Yeah. Because in some ways, Sansa is a benevolent Cersei. She's a good leader version of Cersei, but she is she's out to protect her she's out to protect her crew and she makes that very, very clear. They well, went, for Cersei they, it was just her immediate family. I don't think she really cares about anyone. But, but yeah, but, no, but, but essentially Sansa it's wants her to family, protect the North. family name, yeah, the North. Uh, the, the now, other, here's wait, another wait, thing on. that I can I just add Go one ahead. more thing yep. about Cersei mm-hmm. and, and Jamie yep. dying? I think Cersei and Jamie dying, the beauty of that twist is that it denied everybody a satisfaction kind of murder the way Ramsey Bolton died. Like in yeah. the end, she dies in a way where you kind of feel for her and you're feeling for her with her brother and you're just kind of like sad for them in this last moment. And I to know, me, that's what I'm saying. That was a great, like, you know, messing with the minds and hearts of the people watching. But it was also important because it was also important in a way, I know as much as everyone wanted Arya to kill her, in order for Arya to evolve, Did I didn't even care about everyone that. once wanted Arya to kill Cersei. Everyone wanted that. But in order for Arya to evolve, she needed that moment with the Hound where he's like, He's no, like, I, a, I love that mom. Okay, are you banging the table as you're yeah, speaking? Yeah, I'm, I'm like very yeah. passionate because it's Sorry. very loud. Um, number one. Number two, I think that moment with Arya is just really dumb because she's so headstrong. Nothing for years has stopped her. And then he turns around and he's like, you're going to die, by the way. And she's like, oh, my God, thank you. I didn't realize. I'm just no, going to peace out. No, I thought that the was a bit. with him. I feel like that moment could have happened a few minutes earlier. Her realization could have happened. No, because I don't think until they were in there and they saw and saw the extent of the damage and how badly everything was crumbling. I don't think they understood. She knew the minute she leaves King uh, Winterfell that when she kills Cersei, she's gonna die. She knows she's gonna die. It's not like she just realized like, oh shit, I guess we're gonna die. She was happy with that. I just thought it was a bit think too so. easy. I, I, I yeah, think she knows she, there's no going on. They both know it's a suicide mission. I, I agree with Becky's point, though, that so Arya's story could be over when she kills the Night King and goes off with the Hound, and you're like, oh, I guess Arya's just going to be a Stone Cold Killer forever. But they wanted to give us a little bit of a happier resolution, and they wanted to create a moment. It was almost like they had a, a Venn diagram of stuff we have to happen. They're like, ugh, everybody wants to see the Clegane brothers have their big final fight, so let's try to squish that up with him teaching Arya a lesson. Even though I have to say, the Hound and the Mountain fighting is, is purely for the audience to enjoy a fan-favorite character who probably should have died three seasons ago. Yes. But I think it's okay. Anyway, so yes, I do think that had they, it, it gave her, it gives her more, whether or not you like the moment in which she learns that lesson, it it continues to evolve her character. And I think keeping her on the same track as the Stone Cold Killer Assassin would actually feel unsatisfying to me that, that there isn't more depth to her, more it, dimension just, to her, that they're not giving her more. It's just the end of her character then. Then it's yeah, like, Yeah, that okay. would be the end of her character. And here, and I think what's interesting is that for, like, you know, the the main people that we're, that we're following, that we're now going, these people aren't going to die, are going to follow them to the end, we're, we're seeing, you know, like, the second half of, of that episode is really, like, an epilogue to each of their stories and where will they each go next. Yeah, but I kind of felt like it was a bit too obvious that it was like spin off, like what No, they Arya, they said specific, they actually very specifically like have said there there will absolutely not be a spin off about her. 
I'm, I'm sure there I mean, won't for be. I now. Just felt like in the for yeah, I just felt I mean, like maybe he'll write a trite. book about her, but and maybe that's and, part of it. He was like, she can't die because trite. she's gonna have I, I'll like write a book about her or something. I, but they were like very, they were pretty clear that they're that none of these characters from this world will have a spinoff. The, also, I was a bit no. Go ahead. It's okay. Uh, I'll make my own podcast and talk about Game of Thrones. Go ahead. Oh, big no, go ahead, Lily. Go for it. I just. I, I things that I felt like were all of a sudden trite. Her doing a 180 and be like, oh, I guess I just won't die. I, I'm not saying that that was bad. I just don't like the way they did it, as the walls are crumbling in that like one quick moment. Um, I don't care that she didn't kill Cersei. I'm like fine. I feel like she got over that a long time ago and was just doing it because like she has nothing left and it's just a mission. Hmm. But also like that That's very Jamie fun. going. I enjoyed Jamie going back to Cersei in that way that he never really did change and that he really, like, above all, his love for her. I just found it, all, again, a little bit trite. He goes and sleeps with Brienne, tries to pretend to be a good person, and then he's like, oh, wait, I am a monster. Bye. That's, no, but that's what I'm saying. When, he, I think when he that finds I think out that, that Cersei, it, he, he gets the news that, Cersei, things go wrong with Daenerys. That one of the dragons is killed, and things the shit is going down. And it get, you get the impression Cersei might win, and then he runs away. And you're like, oh my god, is he actually gonna kill her? Is he gonna? And then in the end, he was always going just to like smooch to her. save her, to be with her, yeah, to go back to her. But that's what I'm saying is that I don't have a problem with any of these choices. It just they didn't unpack them and they didn't give them the depth and dimension that they did to other things where they took entire seasons to flesh out. Right, for all the time the we spent is. on Walder Frey fetching. Yeah, no, I, I mean, seriously. It would have been nice to have gotten more like I'm, of Jamie's character evolving. Going back, like then, seeing, you know, yeah. like the, the seasons where Jamie goes from being super evil and his relationship with Brienne and becoming this good person, that's like one of the best character developments. And then if they had been able to spend three, four episodes showing him going back to darkness, like that would have been right. amazing, you know, to see his circle. Yeah. But they did it. Just had too rushed. And that's where I feel like they just got burnt out and were like, the show's too expensive. It's too hard to make. We're all exhausted. Let's just. They they were like me. They were like, ugh, let's just end it already and tell them. Exactly. And so, again, on the surface, I don't have a problem with any of the choices. I think it was sadly a rush season. I will say, though, like, boo hoo hoo, Crimea River, I was real sad when that dragon picks her up with its little foot. I know. Flies away with her. That was really sad. That was well done. That, so let's that talk well about done. let's talk about Daenerys's death, and let's talk about well let's talk about Daenerys turning into the dictator, which I again I'm like this whole time I I was with Varys I was like eh, 50 50 whether or not she's gonna be a lunatic if she's in charge, that's number yeah. one number two. Uh, I thought the way they shot that scene, and even though it was cheesy to see the dragon wings come up behind her, it was, it was really, be- really beautiful. Cool. It the was cinematography really, really cool. was beautiful in that, and, in that and, episode. And and she always had this belief. It was like this messianic belief in herself. And, yeah, always. And and it just got more and more like the euphoria of it, Lily. You you used that word euphoria when we were talking about it. Right. Well, she's so like. I, crazy I, with power I thought that scene was magnificent I, when she I, I, I also yeah. think I, I also think um, I, I also think that it's very you know poignant that it's clear that you can't get to that level of power without going cuckoo without being not a little unhinged so well, the only like, nobody's way you get gonna make it because you're unhinged because yeah. you believe in your right. like because you believe in yourself to that right. extent i mean like I, I also, without her they would have lost to the dead guys they would have never beat cersei like would they could not have gotten that far without her and then they just like threw her under the bus well, she, I, I, she went crazy. so let's look at like history right well, let's say like in world war Two, and I, I'm, I'm mixing metaphors here but in world war Two the allies could not have won without russia but the, what happened in russia with joseph stalin if you were inside that that part of the line after world war 2 was pretty rough like you know millions of people would go on to die under that rule right and i think in some ways that was a deal they kind of had to that they made a deal with her to try to win this thing but 
her. Well, that's Sansa's, like, no, that's very much Sansa's perspective. But then you have Jon Snow's perspective of, like, no, 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 I really believe she's going to be this great leader. And Sansa's so, like, well, we'll make a deal with her so we don't die today. So let's but we'll get, see what happens let's tomorrow. Let's get to Jon Snow. So this is where I have some character questions. Because does Jon Snow believe in her because he loves her? Does he believe in her because he really doesn't want to be the king, so he really just wants someone else to be the leader? Because, oh, yeah, sure. Because it's, I have to say, of both. the if love... They had had more, if they had had more time, we would have known. <laughs> the love relationship between them, to me, is the weakest thing. The only Never purpose it, it serves is that it's it's what allows him to get close to her at the end to murder her. But it, it was just it never it never connected but the idea that john wants her to be the queen because he really just he has never wanted to sit on the iron throne doesn't want to sit on the iron throne yeah to me that is is what his deal is and i think his character aside from that little bit of confusion or maybe they want to leave it unknown unknown i do really think that Part of Jon Snow's character is that he's never been that bright. He's had smart people around him telling him what to do. And in some ways, it was whoever was going to be the last person to convince him of something was going to get him to do their well, thing. I, yeah, he, I never thought he's kind of a dum dum. Yeah, he's yeah. very no, he's brave. A dumb, whatever. He's, he's also a dum dum in the way that, like, okay, so he kills her. He had a hundred different ways to either. Okay, you could say like, like maybe he was just too tired no, and he not, surrendered. That's not his character, John Snow. But he just like goes truth. to jail. But it's and is not like, his okay, character. But it also is very true to John Snow's character to tell the truth to the point where like it would get him killed. I, I wouldn't have mind yeah, seeing a John a Snow gray war. Well, yeah. What another thing I really liked is they. Really mom, mom was like, well, "Why didn't they battle it out?" I think another and, like, cool thing yeah, that they that did would have been a cool one. was they also yeah, yeah. robbed everyone of a big John Snow final one-on-one -on -one fight. He didn't have like yeah. a fight with the Night King. He didn't have that a fight would have been with gray awesome. Worm. If he yeah. fought Gray Worm one that two. I just wanted idea. to be known. I also would have been completely, completely fine if at the end. They all decided he had to be executed. I would have been totally fine with that. Oh, ending. if Sansa sold him out and was like, if Sansa yeah, was right. like, all right, was like, I love you, but or or she doesn't have a choice, and then it's similar to like the beginning of a series when Ned dies. It, it, yeah. Although I thought it might have ended with him being beheaded, like Ned. Although yeah. I think that's that a bit him, too much symmetry. Maybe they, yeah. It's I, I, so that's another topic. I think about. they kept him alive because he's a fan favorite. I, I, I th and I think the the crushingness of sending him out in some ways of sending him out to be in the night's watch and to not have a family line and all of that was a with both a punishment but also in some ways they send him back to the wildlings where truthfully he was the happiest he was of any time. Yeah, don't, That's you, feel what like I said. Just, don't you feel like you're just gonna abandon the night's watch and just go live with the wildlings? That's what, well, I mean, there's I no mean, night's I mean, watch left. It's him, just like, right. Tormund and a bunch of wildlings living that's in Castle Blanche. That's what I said Blanche. to Shai. I feel like he kind of was like, yeah, I'll go there because like, that's where he fell in love for the first time. And he was like, yeah, I just sort of feel like he's going to go settle north of the wall with them. And, and then now let's talk about symmetry and pilots because I have to say I am I, – so I really like this ending. I thought it was satisfying. My favorite mm -hmm. characters all made it and had – relatively satisfying endings Sansa who is my absolute favorite I was really impressed that she makes that move at the end and was like yeah we're not going to be one of the seven kingdoms my, we never were my only issue is that she did not get enough screen time in those last couple episodes and she is by far like really the strongest one of the strongest not the strongest character with like the best character development and I was missing her so much in those last couple of and, episodes and I would also say it's a very very male dominated end of the story like Arya's right. story is great but she's really not in the story it, there's just so many dudes at the end I, I would have uh, I would have well, liked that, to have that, seen I mean, more yeah, of the strong female yeah. characters at the end and that's what I read a great I mean there's so many really funny tweets um, there's some really about funny stuff this, there's, there's some really like it's worth it just for the tweets when someone was like, so there's um, a bunch of really strong, smart women to choose who could, you know, have the throne. And yet they choose a white 
dude who has no clue about what's going on. So, <laughs> right. Exactly right. Literally, like, like as they're gonna sit down and have like their first meeting, he's like, well, I'm gonna he's go. Like, to I know, he's like, he's like, anybody know what that dragon is? Which, which I have superpowers, but I don't. But like, like, which leads me to the question: Did Tyrion really manipulate everyone in a way? not necessarily maliciously, but manipulate the scenario with all of his speeches, knowing that if Bran becomes king, he's not going to, he's truly not going to rule. He really doesn't want it. He says he doesn't want it and that he would get to just run the show. I, I think Tyrion, I think Tyrion in some ways absorbed Varys's protection of the realm. And I think there's a real character development there. This drunk nihilistic guy who was raised as a monster at the end is the steward behind the scenes, the guy erased from history. I mean, having been a civil servant myself, right? The person that, you know, does work behind the scenes that doesn't get mentioned in the book. And right. The story. He's not even mentioned. And, and in some ways I think that that was a fascinating end for him it's him and these guys sitting around talking about the bureaucracy and the horse trading that needs to go into rebuilding <laughs> king's landing and how he didn't want to be the hand and he's it's insisted that he is the hand i really enjoyed that because in some ways it what he was it's what he was made to do is to be this incredible problem solver and and the compassion that he developed so i really dug that but i don't think he manipulated himself into a uh, into the his, leadership role. I think he, I, I think he would have been happy to bow out. Another place where I felt sold a little bit short again because I felt like they were short on time is like Yara, who definitely had a conversation with Daenerys last season of being like the Iron I want to rule the Iron Islands, be the queen of the Iron Islands and have them be independent. But oh, she, she didn't really that? seem to ask for her. Yeah, but she didn't seem to ask it for was, her independence. That, that was no, she, she bent the knee. She bent the knee. She went oh, she, to the okay. Iron Islands to protect them for Daenerys. No, okay. she bent the and knee. And then what about, didn't, wasn't there some sort of like usurping situation in Dorne where the king's brother killed him and then took over? Uh, do we really and then, like, care what happens in Dorne? No, I don't. He's just, just sitting there. That, like, He's just sitting oh, there. I guess this Remember how, guy's in The only thing now, the like, Dorne plot line gave us that I can recall is the smushing of of Oberon's head, which right, but again, comes it's back like, at the end. This <laughs> the whole, end. this whole uh, world, and, t- and it's just kind of None like of it didn't really matter. It this like what the last. Does, what does matter is Sansa telling that guy to sit the fuck down. That was the best. <laughs> that was a great. Uh, her, and she's her, like, her no, doofus uncle. That guy's uncle. Such a she's like, no, no. Just she's like, you just sit down. That was the best part I, of the episode. It, look, ultimately. <laughs> The Lannisters, the Starks, and the Targaryens. That's who this was about. That's who yeah. this was about. That's who it started with, and that's who it ended with. So let's talk about symmetry. There are some shows, uh, uh, and and, and uh, Lons had a great tweet, or, or someone had a great tweet, and Lons jumped on it as well with me, which is that, like, if you're a Game of Thrones fan and you're complaining, you like, stop being a baby because How I Met Your Mother is the all-time biggest screwing of the fans that's ever happened. And that's a situation where they started with a pilot, they evolved the show over years, and they insist on ending it symmetrically with the pilot. And I think that that is... I think that's a huge mistake sometimes. I think you have to... It's okay to have references or whatever, but if you take people through 10 years of a show, 8 years of a show, and point Z looks weirdly like point A... Like that, it's too cute, and in some ways, it it's, can sometimes negate the journey that they've been on. I think in this case overall, Jamie and Cersei dying in each other's arms. They, you know, how does episode one end with the two of them together and causing and and Bran being pushed out the window and then ultimately Bran sitting on the throne. Although it was out of left field, and everyone and and like that guy's as charismatic as toast. <laughs> Yeah, I was I was okay with that because that journey, that symmetry, w- w- still reflected their journey. Whereas there are some shows where they just like, well, let's just do what we did in the pilot all over again at the end of this. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, it's another show where this was a bit of a problem for me. You guys, Justified, I love Justified. So spoilers. I, did, for mm. I never saw the ending. No, so, no, no, spoil no, 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 I'm not going to spoil the I ending. I never saw the I'm end. not going to spoil the ending. But there are times in Justified when Boyd Crowder and Raylan Givens team up together. And those times are amazing. 
but for the last season, they basically bring you back to Raylan Givens going after Boyd Crowder. It's all about that. But at that point in the show, it's really hard to get the gusto back up for the motivation to go after Boyd because they've helped each other enough times. They haven't really gone after each other in a while. It's kind of like it, like Billions in this season. I'm not ruining too much by saying in Billions in this season, uh, Rhodes, Paul Giamatti, and Axe, Damian Lewis, are. I wouldn't say they're allies, but it's not about them trying to destroy each other. And... Like, I'll be annoyed if when they do a last season of Billions, it's just about them trying to be destroying each other again. Right. Okay. Sometimes it just feels fabricated. All okay. right. So, so I feel like we're all in agreement here. Yeah, we are. So, so okay. By Rent or Meh, the final, the final places for the characters of Game of Thrones. Becky. I buy. Sure. I buy. I buy. I buy as well. Mm-hmm. All right. How about I stick with what I said? I like the ending. I just don't think they gave it enough. They didn't flesh it out enough. It was too short of a season. And people have to stop whining. And like, and we also we can all like also secretly right. laugh that Bran is now like on the yeah, ground. Please, it's not like this is Star Wars. Let's take it down a notch. Exactly. I, as the chief whiner about the Last Jedi, I'm sorry. Yeah. This show's been on for eight years. It's not thirty years of building a character. So before we go, any Rex, Lily, so Lily and I went to the movies. Lily and I, here's a Rex. Lily and I went to the movies, and we went to see The Hustle at the movie theater I always take Lily to that has the folding, the, the reclining seats. And we were so excited for it that we each got, I got an entire tub of gourmet caramel popcorn, and Lily got an entire tub of regular popcorn. And the I mine ate, was like twice. I realized in the picture, mine's twice the size of yours, which yeah. is disgusting. And so the two of us sat. We, we two of us sat. It was the best. It was amazing. And I remember eating the first third of my popcorn, being like, oh, "I'm fine." And then just going through the rest of it, I, I swear it, it congealed in my stomach. It crystallized in my stomach like a brick, <laughs> like all of the sugar. The, the best was like, I don't together. know at what point you fell asleep for a solid 20, 25 minutes and were just snoring. <laughs> there's definitely people in our row. <laughs> yeah. I was like, there's not enough sound effects in this movie to hide that. Like you would have okay. gone to like a Fast and the Furious. I love this review of the movie where we have not heard a single thing about the movie. Oh, the movie is just very rotten scoundrels, it's, it's, it's but a with great, a gender flaw. Right. It's a, it's a renter. Like, we went to see the theater because there was nothing else to see, and it was just so fun to go to the movies. So I would suggest people could rent it. I would not spend a lot of money on it, but it was it was cute and funny, and the best was, like, just watching Shy nap through Rebel Wilson's comedy. Yeah, but, but it was cute. like, I woke up after my nap, and I was like, Lily, I think this is a remake of Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. <laughs> Everything in this is exactly the same, and it basically is. So that sounds know. accurate. Yeah. So uh, that's definitely a rent to meh for me, but the popcorn was a buy, even though it. it crushed my insides. Yeah. Uh, Becky, do you have any recs? Anything you're watching? Uh, no, I just I just wrapped up uh, season six of Great British Baking. Highly recommend. Cool. That's and all. Lily started Shit's Creek. I did. I will get into that another time because that shows my spirit animal now. Amazing. All right. Okay, I'm actually going to need you to stay on the line for a minute, Sean, when we hang up, so I can just ask you some questions All right. and talk Be- to you about it. Becky? It makes me so happy. Where can people follow you? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at PaperBKPrincess. And I want to do, can I do a shout out? Yeah, sure. I want to do a shout out to Cousin Vanessa, who came over every Sunday night to watch the last season of GOT with me. It was a really special experience. Thank you. What'd she Love think? you. I think she was, like, annoyed by some of the stuff, but, like, generally liked it, but, like, you know, mixed feelings. But we'll have to uh, have her on and ask her. Okay. Lily? Um, Chichi K. Gomez on, on the Twitter, but I'm locked out of it right now. So when I figure out how to get back in, I'll tweet at you. Okay, fine, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can follow me it's at... It's a situation. You, you can follow me at pancake for table on Twitter and Instagram. You can follow us all at Fry Night Movie on Twitter and Instagram or FridayNightMoviePod.com. And uh, we're, we're like less than, or we're about two weeks away, 15 days to All-Star Comic-Con in Tyson's Quarter, Virginia. We've got official Friday Night Movie t-shirts. 
We've got the Friday Night Movie Spinning Wheel Game. We've got the Friday Night Movie Card Game. Official card game is going to be there at the booth. Uh, we've It's going to be a huge, amazing party. Get your tickets. Come and hang out with us. The music from What Did This Eat is now going to kick in, and we're going to dance. See you at Comic-Con. See Bye. You. Bye. See you Bye. in two weeks, Jai. See you in two weeks. See you in two weeks. Bye. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. Love you. Bye. Uh, and I get to go see a cardiologist next week. That's like a specialist I've never oh, been. I want a cardiologist so bad. I